Good morning, Juan. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, and uh, thank you for having me. Juan, I'd like to focus on um, the foreign exchange. Pretty interesting market in the past few months. So far, the DXY is steady uh, ahead of the debate at 94.12. Uh, what are you looking at um, and what are you looking for uh, from this debate when it comes to foreign exchange? And what are your expectations uh, for the DXY after the uh, tonight's uh, political Super Bowl? Uh, well, uh, tonight's debate is certainly uh, a main event, uh, but uh, there are other factors that uh, we're actually watching out for. I think uh, primarily we do want to see today if today is the final day uh, where Democrats and Republicans in Congress do not see eye to eye uh, on achieving and coming up with an agreement for fiscal spending, which is what Jerome Powell and Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin have been trying to uh, to, to really campaign for for, uh, for the past week and a half, two weeks. So what you're seeing is um, obviously this week there's a lot more optimism than last week. I think uh, I think it really is based on sentiment. The U.S. dollar uh, seems to be losing ground because uh, because people uh, do feel that it, that COVID-19 is something that is priced in. That is something that we know that is going to be with us through not only the end of this year but also through uh, probably most, if not all, of 2021. So the the focus now really is if today there is going to be any achievement in any type of money, any any fiscal help at all, because if it means nothing, if it leads to no um, no agreement, then Democrats and Republicans will indeed uh, leave town early. Of course, I'm here around Washington, D.C., so they'll leave town, go to their constituencies and campaign prior to the election. So tonight's debate will be very interesting because we will uh, we really don't know um, how how much will be mentioned about markets, uh, obviously uh, there's a lot of tension and, 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 and everybody is eagerly awaiting to see what they have to say to one another. But I think when it comes to the US dollar, there are other uh, situations and other um, uh, things that we have to watch out for, such as improvement uh, in the uh, in, in locking um, or unlocking, I should say, unlocking the funds from the 750 billion euro of a rescue fund package in euro that of course has given credit and merit to the euro to rise once again. And on the other side, uh, or, or, or really also in the Atlantic is the UK, the, the pound going up because Brexit and their, in their political situation, which has been very intense in the past few weeks, has also improved. So there are things that do tie to the debate, which are going to be about, you know, uh, what are we thinking about vaccines? Is Biden going to be really tough uh, about the economic uh, uh, downfall that this uh, pandemic has created? And is Trump going to defend uh, his policies and his pre uh, pre-COVID economy, those are, uh, I think, the more relative, uh, the more the, the items that relate the most to markets, and that's what we will watch out for. But it is hard to say if the dollar really will be much better or much worse because of the debate. I think it really has to do with the progress that we make in the next uh, eight to ten hours, or maybe more, to see if Democrats and Republicans can come up with anything. Because obviously, we don't have a, a rescue package here. In fact, um, so far it's uh, pretty possible that the Democrats will unveil a $2.2 trillion uh, pandemic relief bill, certainly talks between uh, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin and uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi are about to kick off this morning. Uh, so uh, are you bullish on it? And uh, certainly, uh, do, you, do we want to be on the markets if this package is going to be on? Well, that's that. That's where really we we are going to see uh, how much volatility it creates, and if the markets are once again going to go on a pessimistic risk aversion mode. If indeed um, uh, the, the Congress cannot come up with absolutely anything, and no, it all just becomes a focus on the political campaigning, that would be bad. And yes, you're right. I mean, do we really want to participate in markets uh, in which uh, you know there's there's obviously a tremendous amount of monetary help and a lot of policy tools that are out there. And now, like you and I have uh, have discussed, how the Fed, how the Fed's role has really transformed into something much more encompassing than simply, uh, you know, just interest rates and watching out for inflation. Um, the level of economic growth, the full employment, all these things are going to matter. So, so uh, it, it really is hard to say. Without a package, can you really have much faith in in the U.S. economy? Can you have much faith that globally things are going to be okay? No, it's going to be another addition to to a pile of negative items that is likely going to throw the, the, the buck back into a safety mode and maybe maybe uh, reverse some of the gains that we have seen overnight, which are due to good economic 
situations and good uh, politics, at least going on on the European side. So uh, th this package thing, I, I, I myself, you asked me if I, you know, if I, if I feel it's gonna, it's gonna happen. I absolutely, I, I've been, I've been hoping for the past two months that there is a rescue package because I think, uh, outside of politics and outside of anything else, the more important thing is to realize that we have a physical real, a physical threat to our economy here. And the only way to deal with it is by appropriately and, co and cohesively helping everybody out, no matter what, what their income is, because this, this situation is unlike anything we've ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. You've mentioned previously the sterling um, against the dollar and also euro sterling, which is also a pretty interesting cross. By the way, euro against the sterling is up about uh, more than two tenths of one percent. Uh, pretty interesting situation in the United Kingdom, as you've mentioned, in terms of politics. And I just wanted to remind everyone that Brexit talks kicked off uh, today between the EU and the UK. So uh, what kind of targets can you imagine specifically when it comes to euro sterling? Well, uh, when it comes uh, when it comes to euro, uh, obviously a euro to the dollar right now being in the one seventeenth, and then uh, pound uh, being against the dollar at one twenty eight uh, at in the one twenty eight fifty two right now. Uh, you you're seeing that obviously these two currencies, euro and pound, are rising against the dollar in tandem at the moment because of good news. So how does that affect the euro? Pound situation well of course for a for a while there it seemed like the pound had the advantage especially uh, uh, last year and, 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 and through the beginning of this year uh, when uh, when things uh, on the euro on the on the European Euro uh, Union side on the, the Europe look look far more uh, uh, just uh, far more pessimistic uh, obviously the pandemic has changed things and there is now merit uh, behind uh, all the growth uh, on the euro side which is based on of course as I mentioned, the, the 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 significance of the fiscal integration that it means for France and Germany and all these uh, big countries to come together and, and put something uh, that is a rescue and a recovery fund. Um, euro pound, I, I, I honestly do see that cross uh, going to the benefit of euro because no matter what, uh, there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of work to be done. Even if even if there is a trade deal and and, and you do fix. Uh, some of the border situation which of course recently what has actually happened is there's been a physical threat a, a physical obstacle uh to doing good commercial trading because trucks are no, not prepared for everything that's going on so i think on that side it's going to affect pound more and on the euro pound uh cross here i do feel like uh, like on uh the euro is going to be stronger than than pound so you're going to have mu much more pur pur uh, purchasing power in the next six months on euro because i think this rescue package truly does mean that as as it continues to be uh, as the funds continue to be given to each country one by one and 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 this improves economically uh the continent the rise of euro is going to be significant enough that it's going to be much better against pound and much better against dollar so i do see the euro rising above both so let me ask you one final question juan which are the crosses that you're looking at well, I know uh, last time, uh, uh, if anything, we, we had talked about emerging market uh, currencies, right? Of course, the MSCI Emer Emerging Market Currency Index had improved tremendously uh, ever, since, uh, ever, ever since it started recovering uh, since April and May. But now it's starting to run into issues because of, uh, again, uh, risk aversion, the, the lack of faith that uh, we have. Uh, and one thing that, that has come up, and I'll, I'll say this before I say the pairs, is um, the, the pandemic has not been handled internationally in a cohesive, in a cooperative way. Everybody has kind of done its, uh, done its own thing. Like, for example, here in the United States, we keep reading articles about how Italy has done a good job, Italy on its own, right? But th this disease is a human disease. It's affecting everybody. So the lack of co cohesive uh, cooperation is finally coming to light because what is happening? Well, you know, the United States has its struggles. Italy, Spain, the Euro bloc countries have its struggles. But the countries that were struggling prior to the pandemic, which, of course, do include those gigantic countries such as Brazil, India with the INR, with the Real. And now we have a situation which is, uh, you know, we're talking about war uh, that Turkey and Russia have to watch watch for what Azerbaijan and Armenia and that, that, that territorial conflict is going to mean to them. So those currencies that we had talked about, the Russian ruble, the Brazilian real, the Indian rupee, uh, these currencies had kind of gone, gone up uh, as part of an emerging market uh, resurgence and as, as part of markets uh, flourishing because there was this 
uh, positivity and optimism behind vaccines and everybody kind of recovering in, in tandem, but not everybody is recovering in tandem. The, 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 everything is right. quite uneven and, and now it's starting to reveal. So watch out for those MSCI uh, emerging markets, uh, market currencies such as BRL, such as Ruble, because you may want to put them aside and start paying attention more to the majors because the fluctuation on those is likely going to be downward instead of upward. All right. Thank you very much. Juan Perez, FX Strategy Samples. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you so much.